Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to blend acrylics. Now this is one of the more common questions that I'm asked, so I want to make this a step-by-step -step tutorial so I can show you the tips and techniques for blending large areas of acrylic paint. Now acrylics is one of the mediums that people sometimes stay away from because they do dry quite fast compared to oils. However, with the methods that I'm going to share in this video, we can make acrylics stay as wet as long as we need and they can then look and act the same as oils. So the first thing that I want to do is completely cover the background with paint. Now I am using here at the moment wet on wet blending techniques. This is a really nice way of getting those soft edges, those nice transitions from dark to light. And I just want to hide the white of that canvas. That's my main aim here. So my first tip at this stage is make sure that you're applying enough paint to the surface. Quite often we're only using small amounts of paint and that's where some of the initial difficulties with blending acrylics can start. If there's not enough paint on that surface, we're not going to be able to get that smooth transition as I currently am here. Now what I'm using here is just a normal makeup blush brush and I do prefer those to standard acrylic blending brushes because I find that they shed the bristles far less. So that's what I'm using here. Now I want to be making sure that here I'm using nice long wide brush strokes so I get that nice seamless transition. So I'm now going to do my first colour change. So this was actually a background where I created a tutorial on how to paint a tree. This is all available in real time with a voiceover while I'm painting. So if you would like to see this in-depth version then I'll link my Patreon in the description below. And my Patreon does focus on the pet portrait side of things. I've got a wide range of domestic pets, dog cats and horses and a nice variety of wildlife subjects as well. I do have a link in the description below for a Patreon library which lists all of my tutorials that are available on each of the tiers that I offer on Patreon. So as I said all of that will be linked in the description but if you've got any questions at all feel free to pop them in the comments below. So with this first colour change, when you are working with wet on wet blending techniques, it's really important that we don't mix those two colours together too much in order to get a colour shift. So if you mix blue and yellow together, you are going to get green. So I was having to be a little bit more cautious with the layers that I'm using, which is what I'm explaining here in the real time version. But with that first yellow mixture, I did make sure it was more of a pale yellow. So I had more of the white in there. But because I am actually, this is a background for a tree, I didn't mind that it had a little bit of a green tint because I am going to be painting in the grass, which is why I'm going in now with my green colour. So all of this at the moment has just been done using wet on wet blending techniques. There is no water that's been applied to the surface at all. But using water on your surface can be great for keeping that paint wet for hours. And there are some situations where maybe you're creating more of a mottled bouquet background or you're working on a larger scale where you do need that paint wet for considerably longer. That's when you're going to be using a fine mist sprayer bottle. And we're going to be sharing the techniques later on in that video for that method. But for the time being, this background that I've created here, we've got that nice mixture from blue into the lighter yellow into the green at the base. This would work for a really nice background as it is. You could easily leave it here and put your subject on top. So this is the wet on wet blending methods. And as you can see, it works really nicely for a simple blurred background. So the first thing I want to mention is I was really happy with how this looked at this stage and I could have easily have just jumped straight into the tree itself but I did want to show my Patreon members how to blend using a fine mist sprayer bottle so this is where I decided to show this extra technique on top. So the first thing is here I'm just reinforcing a bit more of this lighter horizon colour. So I've put in my pale off white colour, just got a little bit of the blue mixed in with it and I'm blending that out with my makeup brush. Now you can see there that it's been a little bit harder to get that soft transition and that's because the layer underneath had completely dried. So I have now added a little bit of water to that surface using a fine mist sprayer bottle. Now the first thing you can see here is how the paint is running down that surface. That's an indication that that's a little bit too much. So I'm just going to lightly dab that off with a paper towel. 
So when I did this real-time version, I was happy that I made this mistake because I could then show my Patreon members how to fix it. So what you can do here is use your hairdryer. You can see as I'm blending, it's starting to bunch up in the middle. That's because the mixture is still too wet. So you're either gonna have to wait a few seconds for that to dry a little bit, not completely, because you still need to blend it, or you can use your hairdryer, but that is just very, very briefly, and that will help to just make that mixture dry a little bit quicker, um, and then you can get this nice soft transition as I am here. But the key to that is you do not want this paint to completely dry because obviously then we're not gonna be able to blend it at all. Every time you see that light layer of mist, that's me using my fine mist sprayer bottle. When I am using that, this is a really big tip. When you do use your fine mist sprayer bottle, you don't wanna hold it too close to your surface. If you do hold it too close, you're gonna end up with a lot of that water running down in that one area. So I like to hold that fine mist sprayer bottle about a foot and a half away from my surface to ensure that I get a really nice even layer of water across the top. It's always best to add a little bit more water as you go than add too much and then have to try and wait for it to dry and fix that because as you saw there for a few seconds before, it just it's a little bit of an inconvenience. So it's always best to add a little bit of water each time. Now you can add this paint as much as you want. If you want to make it lighter or you want to adjust your colour, you can use these techniques as often as you like. But one tip that I would recommend, if ever you get to the point where you're happy with your background, so let's say at this stage you were really happy and you didn't want to risk ruining that by applying more water on top, wait for this to dry. Once it's completely dried and you then apply more paint and more water with your fine mist sprayer bottle, if you do a layer that you don't like, it hasn't affected anything previous. So that means then if you do make a mistake, you could potentially remove that paint from the surface by applying more water and gently removing that with the paper towel that you saw a few minutes ago. But by allowing the layer underneath to completely dry when you are happy with it, it takes that pressure off of ourselves that we're not going to completely ruin what we've achieved so far. Now, the one question that I am asked is, why do you have to use a fine mist sprayer bottle? Why can't you just use a normal spray bottle? Well, the problem with a normal spray bottle is they will actually put heavier water droplets on your surface. So you're more likely to get a blotchy look and it can have more of that water run down your surface. So I would definitely recommend to get a fine mist sprayer bottle if you can. Now, when I got to this point, I was really happy that I decided to show both options in the Patreon version because it does give you that flexibility depending on the type of effect that we're creating. But as I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, the blended techniques I use for painting fur are gonna be different because we need to be a lot more precise. But anything where you're required for a larger area and a really nice soft background like this, both of these techniques work really well. And as I've said, I do have a range of tutorials on Patreon that have various different subjects. So if you do want to know how to soften and blend fur, then I will link my Patreon in the description below. The tutorials that I now upload are all with a voiceover while I'm painting, so every single process is explained thoroughly. So I really do hope the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video have been useful. If they were, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. I do also upload two to three videos here to YouTube every week, so if you'd like to get notified of that content, then hit that subscribe and the bell button. As I've said, I do have all of my in-depth tutorials available on Patreon, so I will link that in the description below. And if you've got any art-related questions, feel free to also pop them in the comments because I'm more than happy to answer them and help if I can. I'm going to be uploading another video to YouTube next week, but as always, thank you so much for watching.